hey, this is Jeff Fat with Learning Dojo. I'm going to show you how to quickly create a tab interaction. We're not going to focus on the design, but just how quick you can actually create a tab interaction without even knowing any type of variables or anything like that. So let's go ahead and start a new project, first of all, in Articulate Storyline 2. And I'm going to save this project on my desktop. I'm just going to name this Tabs. And we're going to go ahead and save or name this page. I'm going to double click into that page. I'm going to name this page tabs as well. And to make sure that my timeline is here, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my timeline. So you can go ahead and just minimize that so we can focus just on the actual stage for now. Now, just as a, again, I'm not focused on designs, but just so we have this at least looking somewhat decent, I'm going to go into designs, come into background styles, go ahead and click on format. Um, background because I want the actual text content to pop a little bit. So we're going to have the background just be a light gray. So I'm going to select light gray here and then click uh, apply to all. So that's just basically any page will, this will apply to. I'm going to go ahead and click on close and now we're going to start creating some of the content. I'm going to first of all create the background of where the text is going to be. It's going to be a simple tab interaction when you click on it. It's going to show different text, not much to it. But I'm going to click on insert, come into shape go down to this rectangle here and I'm going to go ahead and just draw out a rectangle area of where the text is going to be. So this is the text and on the left hand side is where the tab interaction is at or the tabs themselves is going to be. So I'm going to come up to format, go ahead and to get rid of the outline. I'm not a big fan of the outlines here and I'm going to change the shape fill to be a white color and we're going to have a little effect on this. I'm going to go to shape effect, go down to shadow and then just choose the outer shadow here. I don't really like how strong it is. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. There's two different ways that you can do this. You can come up to uh, just click on this arrow next to shape or sorry next to shape effect, go down to shadow, and then go down to shadow options, or you can just click on under the shape styles, you can actually click on this expand button. And what that will do is it'll expand out all of the different properties for the shape. Well, I'm gonna come down to shadow here, and then I'm going to go ahead and up the transparency for this shadow. Let's go ahead and up it to about 90%. We just want it to barely be there. And I'm gonna cha change the size to be 101%. So it's gonna take the current size of the shape, expand it by 1%. Really not much, we're just looking for a slight hint that makes this just pop a little bit. So you can see once I unselect it somewhere, you can see that the drop shadow is just very faint and it's really just kind of making it pop a little bit here. And that's really what I like on the drop shadow. So now we're gonna go ahead and create a, a button. So I like to come in and there's two different ways to create buttons. You can either uh, create it just by standard coming over to the controls and then selecting a button, or you can actually select a rectangle and create your button yourself. Because the standard controls always has that rounded edge, I don't like to use those. I like to have the sharp corners, so I'm gonna go ahead and select a rectangle. I'm gonna come up here and just draw out this, the size of a button here. So that's pretty much, uh, now I can make this still act like a button. I can have a hover state, a down state and everything. So, but it's pretty much up to you if you wanted to use the standard buttons, you can. I'm not a big fan of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on tab or just type in tab one. That's gonna be the label of this tab. And instead of going through and creating all the different tabs, I'm gonna get this tab exactly how I want and then duplicate it from there. So I'm gonna select this tab. Let's come up to formatting. I'm gonna get rid of that uh, outline here. We're gonna change this field to be this middle section of this blue here. And now we're gonna go ahead and make the overstate and the downstate. So I'm gonna expand out my timeline states. And so I'm gonna click on state. Let's go ahead and click on edit state, create a new state, and then select the drop down box to be hover. Now I'm gonna click on add here. And then what's gonna happen is on the fill, I'm gonna select this drop down box go down to more fill colors and it's gonna pop up with this, uh, this option for me to select more additional fill colors. You can see for some reason it does not have the uh, selected color that I currently have. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this, uh, this pick color and I'm at least gonna get that as the base. Now the reason why is because typically on hover states I like to have it just to be a little slightly darker than the, than the up state and then on the down states I like to have it even slightly darker than the hover state. So I'm gonna come over here now that I have that selected, you can see there's this lighter blue and this darker blue um, basically bar that I can choose. I want a darker shade of this current color so I'm going to go ahead and select this to be a little bit slightly darker by dragging it down and then click OK. 
So that means my hover state is right there. Now I, I do need, when I'm having this button and the person is visiting this state, I do need this to be um, to be to have a selected state because that means it lets them know what current tab they're on. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a current or a selected state. So I'm gonna select the drop down box and go down to select it and click add. Now, just like we did with the hover state, I'm gonna go ahead and select the drop down box, go to fill, more fill colors, and let's just have this be a completely dark state. And so that way we know exactly when it's selected and the user is looking at that tab. So you can see we have a normal state, we have a hover state, and we have a selected state. And this is very um, pretty much the standard that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and click Done Editing States. I'm now going to come into Timeline, and I'm going to make sure I like to have my content named on my timeline. It makes it so much easier when you're adding triggers and doing different things like that. So well, let's go ahead and double click on the rectangle one. And we're just going to call this text back. So there it is, text back. Now on tab one, I'm going to double click on this and say tab one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this um, a couple different times. So I'm going to hit copy paste. This is a control C, control V. Uh, and I'm going to do that just a couple times down here and just expand it out. You can have as many tabs as you want down here. I'm just going to do that, just align it to the bottom. Now I'm going to do a couple things to make sure that this is aligned perfectly on both sides and it's also distributed vertically or um, evenly throughout the, you can see like this one has a far expand between the two different buttons, this one has a smaller one. And so I'm going to go ahead and select each of these by holding the shift button down and I'm going to come up to the align tab or the align option under the formatting and I'm going to first of all align it left side and then I'm going to click on align again and go down to distribute vertically. That way it's an even space between all of these different buttons. One more thing I need to do on this is I'm going to just make sure that all these are uh, named correctly. So I'm going to go in here and just double click on this and just say tab 2. Now we're going to come into this. Uh, I'm going to double click on that. It just adds a number to whatever we're creating here. So I'm going to say that's tab 3. This is tab 4 and then this is tab five. And because I duplicated it from the one that I created, it already has the states in there, so we're good to go there. And I'm gonna do one more thing. Let's go ahead and minimize the timeline. And we're gonna make sure that the user, this is the user view, we're gonna make sure that the user view matches ours. So we're gonna say tab two, tab three, tab four, and tab five. There we go. So we have all these tabs here. And so we're pretty much set up to now start uh, building our own content with the exception of the actual texture. So when the user comes, we're going to go ahead and have some uh, just some text box that says introduction. So I'm going to say introduction. And I'm going to go ahead and just place this on the top right uh, left hand side here. I'm going to bold the introduction and then I'm going to insert one more text. I'm going to click on insert text box and I'm going to stretch out the area of the actual uh, default text. So I'm going to say this is some sample text. Now it's important to set this up beforehand because you're going to duplicate this text in other layers so we just need to make sure that it's in the right position and then when you copy and paste it into other ones it's going to go ahead and copy and paste into all of them. So one more thing I'm going to do is just go ahead down to align left and we're good to go there. So we have the very introduction, uh, we have the introduction text but if I go ahead and preview this You'll notice one thing is the selected state will happen no matter what tab you're actually on. So you can see as soon as I select it, there's the selected state. And then I select this one, select that one, and you can see the selected state always stays selected. Now, we're going to talk about that in a second because you only want the actual current tab to be the selected state. So I'm going to go ahead and select each of these real quick. Well, before we actually do that, let's go ahead and create our layers first of all. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to create five different layers because each layer is going to be show as soon as they've actually selected that tab. So I'm going to go ahead and select a layer or add a new layer. We're going to call this uh, tab one just to match our buttons. So tab one, make sure there's a space in between there. And then we're going to create a new layer, name that one tab two. Create a new layer, tab three, another one for tab four, another one for tab five. 
and there we go. Now on each of these layers, we want to have this introduction text not showing. So when you come in here and you expand out the timeline, let's go ahead and expand this out, you'll have this option for the base layer. If you select this little twirly box here, you can see that there's two text box options right here. You can expand this out a little bit to see it a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that these ones are not visible on this layer. It only applies to this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and check the eyeball, hide, so those are not visible on that layer. Now I'm going to go through each of these tabs and do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those text box elements um, on each of these layers. All of these five layers, basically, all of them are going to have those text boxes hidden. So that way, the introduction text, it doesn't make sense when they've selected tab one to have the introduction text still there. Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this timeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this introduction box and this text and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into all five of these tabs. But I'm going to change one thing about the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and change the title to be tab one on that and then so on. So on tab two, it's going to be tab two. Just so we know that it's selected, tab two. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to tab three. and so on, tab four. And tab five. There we go. So we have all of these kind of set up here, but if I go ahead and preview this, it's not going to work. It's not going to show. So what we need to do is we need to have triggers that will actually show these layers when you've selected them. So I'm gonna, uh, first of all, select tab one, Go ahead and add a trigger and we're going to say instead of jump to slide, we're going to jump to, we're actually going to show layer and then we're going to select that layer to be tab one because this is why you're naming it. Make sure you name your layers, make sure you name your objects and so it's a whole lot easier when you're actually adding the triggers. And when you're trying to read someone else's triggers, if they're not named, it makes it a lot more difficult. So tab, oh, let's go ahead and make sure that tab two is selected before we add on that trigger. So we're going to say tab two. We're going to show layer tab two and then so on for tab three. We're going to add show tab three. Same thing with tab four. We're going to show tab four when it's clicked on and then tab five. When tab five is selected, it's going to show layer tab five. There we go. So let's go ahead and preview this and we'll see one thing that we need to do, uh, one more thing that we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And you notice tab one is right there. Well, that works great. And it shows the selected state. We're good there. Look, I'm gonna go ahead and select tab two, but you'll notice it shows the selected state for tab two, but it also shows the selected state for tab one. Well, you could do one of two things. You could actually go in and say, okay, let's create some layers that will change the state back to um, normal if they're on tab two or anything like that. That's a lot more, uh, and you'd probably have to have some variables and other stuff like that. That's a lot more work than what you really need to do. It's very simple inside of Storyline. Make sure you select all of them here. So I'm going to hold the shift button down and with the shift button still held down, I'm going to right click on this and then I'm going to go into button set. We're going to, we're basically saying all of these buttons are set. So it means when one is selected, the other ones are not selected. So we're going to just say button set one. And that's it. So let's go ahead and preview this. And you can see we still get our hover states, but when I select tab one, that does have the uh, selected state for tab one. But as soon as I select tab two, it unselects tab one and now selects tab two. Now it kind of throws me off when tab two is selected, I could still hover over it. So I may want to just actually remove the hover state on each of these. I'm going to go ahead and do that for a couple of them. So I'm going to go into states click on edit state, go into hover, and then hit delete. Now, if I come in here, I'm not gonna do it for all of them just for this demo, but if I come into here and select tab one, I don't get that hover state. I only see that actual state. The user still sees that it's a button by that hand icon, um, but now when I come into tab two, I can see it immediately selected off and I don't get that hover state there. So that's more of a preference. You can do whatever you want to do in that case. But we only needed to add pretty much five triggers to create this tab interaction within a short amount of time period. So if you want to see more content and more training like this, go to learningdojo.net. We have both uh, pre-recorded or uh, self-paced courses as well as live training that you can attend. 
and get more tips and tricks and learn how to create different types of more advanced interactions and games and, and different things like that. So check it out at learningdojo.net.